Okay, here we are back again, and now we're going to do part four in our lab manual, which is configuring NAT. Uh, and uh, I have it listed here as PAT or NAT overload or masquerade because they're really the different names of the same thing, which is port address translation. And that just means that anything that's being translated by R1 out through the default route to the internet is going to appear. Uh, as different ports on R1's uh, outside address. But before we do that, uh, there actually was a way for me to check whether or not we were getting uh, default route propagation in the internet before NAT. Now, we're not going to be able to ping anything, but what we can do, if you look down here at router 2, we're going to try and ping a random address. And that's going to fail because we have no way uh, really to translate out to the internet or back. However, if we do a trace route out, at least it will show that we know what direction we're supposed to go in, which is 10001, which is our interface leading to router 1. So at least router 2 knows that for any unknown address, it's supposed to move up to R1, but let's uh, take care of this translation, okay? So here we are in the uh, configuration shell for R1. This is where we're going to be setting up our PAT rules. Uh, at this point, I haven't done this yet, but I do want to point out that the Vios community has a really good wiki. And one of the first things you'll find in the wiki is this user guide, and this contains a lot of helpful information. Uh, just real quick instructions on how to get basic configuration done, uh, their syntax, what stuff means. You may, and you know, you can go into specific sections for more detail. Sometimes you'll have to search outside. I've had to search back uh, into uh, forum posts and uh, use net posts when this thing was still called Quagga or Zebra for some of the more, some of the stranger things in, uh, in Vios, but this is pretty good for most of them. Let's just take a look down here. So they have uh, DNAT for port forward, and what we're talking about here is uh, source NAT. Uh, yeah, they normally just call it NAT. It's actually PAT, NAT overload. If you're a CCNA student, you should be familiar with these terms. Uh, it's also called masquerade. And in fact, down here you can see one the parameters is masquerade. So let's just follow. Let's just follow their example here. NAT source. Rule, yeah, call 100 is fine. Outbound interface, and I think we're using E to zero. Sometimes they put these single quotes around things, they're not always necessary. I think that was from an earlier, it's either from an earlier or a later version, I can never tell. But I think this, yeah. If you see enter is the only possible answer, then you're done with this configuration. So then let's see, set net source. address. Uh, let's take care of our client domains first, then we'll actually put in the router domains. Actually, let's do this one first. Net, uh, set net, source, rule, god, uh, 100, translation, address. And you actually have to spell out masquerade here. If you try to do a partial it, it'll it'll assume that you're typing a domain name or something so you actually actually type out masquerade or tab complete that's fine okay now let's go and add our source addresses so at this point in the video i'm just speeding up i'm adding every single source subnet to rule 100 but this is going to be a mistake and you'll see why uh, as soon as i stop doing this it's quite frustrating Okay, so I think that's all we really need to do for NAT. We're defining the outbound as an interface. I think we've got all of our source networks. Can't really scroll up here. Let's commit our changes. Then we'll save them. Okay, 
Now, let's test this. Let's try pinging eight here. No. Well, that totally failed. I'm not sure why. Let's see. Okay, I see my error now. Uh, the problem is that each rule only covers a single subnet, which is, I guess, why they use ranges. So, that's not a big deal. Let's just go fix this. So we're just going to have to create a new rule for every single one? That's ridiculous. Let me look this up in the helpful wiki. Okay, my NAT implementation failed, and I couldn't find anything real specific on this uh, in their wiki, but they don't really mention anywhere, uh, aside from using a supernet, multiple networks, so I'm going to assume the problem is that I can only use one, uh, one subnet for every rule statement. Like here, they have their sample rules 192.168.0024. They don't really have any other source addresses, which is pretty annoying. But I'm going to assume that's how they have it set up, and I'll configure appropriately, and I'll just see if it works. Okay, I've just manually set up, uh, let's see, da, 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 nine source rules. Let's see if they commit. Let's go take a look at the configuration file now. Yeah, you see, this is, a, there must be a better way to do this. Uh, I'm going to go look for a better way to do this. Uh, but for now, let's just see if this works. Well, I am pinging. Let's see if I can get name services. Oops. Why don't I have name services? Ooh, did I need to configure something else? Back to the wiki. So there are a couple of ways that I could fix this problem with DNS from a router. I don't think I'm going to have to once I set up DHCP services for the clients. And realistically, there's not much of a need for the routers to use uh, DNS services. But, you know, just for the heck of it, let's see. Let's see if we can set up a DNS forwarder here. All right. No. Okay, that's just weird. So I thought that the way that the documentation was set, it's not super clear, maybe I'm just misunderstanding it, but there's a service that you maybe saw me futzing around with called uh, Set Service DNS uh, Forwarder. And I had that set up on R1 saying that all DNS requests can go to 8888 and I'll feed them back and I'm going to listen for requests on these two interfaces. Uh, and then I tried to ping a name from R2 and that failed. Even though I thought that, well, R1 is going to get that request. So instead, and this doesn't make any sense, there must be a better way to do this. Maybe I'm just not understanding the command, but so on R2, I set up forwarding DNS name services to 8888. 
uh, and I said listen for the requests on uh, Ethernet 1. So I think what happened was I said go look for uh, www.google.com and it heard the request on this interface. I don't know why, but in any case I got my I got my reply back. That's just weird. I'm going to have to do some more uh, research on that because it just doesn't really make that much sense. So NAT, oh, I have to make sure that NAT uh, should be working. Oh, you see here, if I have NAT working, I was able to ping a numerical address from R2 and R3. I just couldn't get the name services, so that's pretty strange. I'll have to do some more digging into that. Anyway, the NAT translation worked, and we can test that by capturing up here. and opening up R2 P8888 and so you see now we have uh, ICMP requests uh, they're ARPing over here but here's uh, ICMP uh, requests and pings uh, they're all coming uh, from into 8888 which is my target and 192, 168, 122, 195 which is the address here uh, and I think if we open this up a little bit more yeah we can see the sequence of the time to lives and whatnot but yeah net address translation is working thank God for that I thought something really strange was going on uh, the rest of this let's see part 5 switch configuration uh, we we did that in an earlier in earlier one this uh, configuration is correct just to be complete about this let's test our three with just a numerical ping and there we go and I believe if we try to ping a name it should fail yep unknown host okay that is very strange I have no explanation for why uh, DNS forwarding works like that. If you do, uh, leave it in the comments. But anyway, next time we're going to go to DHCP services in Relay, and I know that there's a major bug here, which I will get into in the next video. Thanks a lot.